Hey everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Drawbridge Finance. Today I am going to talk about dividends and why they are so important in my portfolio and uh, why you have to actually look at the dividend payout and uh, its frequency to make sure that you're getting the most out of it uh, and ways to, ways to deal with the dividend. So first of all, uh, what is a dividend? When you purchase shares in a company, they the company as a reward gives money back to their shareholders. So this is an incentive for the shareholders to invest into the company and to give them money. This allows the companies to grow and to expand with this by you financing them essentially. So you are giving them money and then for the term that you hold that money, they give you a little portion of that money back or the portion of the proceeds that they've made from doing their business. So, uh, I like to invest in companies that pay a cash dividend. And the reason that I do is because if you invest in company, two different companies, we'll say company A and company B, they're both identical, except the company B pays a 4% dividend. This is not extravagant, it's 4%. So company A has the same potential as company B in the terms of their growth of their actual stock price. So let's just say that we purchase some shares and we purchase them in company A at $10 a share. In company B, we purchase $10 a share. So they're equal. Now, over time, the price may rise or fall. It may, for both companies, go up to $13. It may go down to $7. We have no idea what this is gonna, what's going to happen with the future forecast of the company. Uh, but company B will give you a dividend. So if the, the stock goes up and down equally, and at the end of the year, company A's stock is worth $10 again, and company B's stock is also worth $10, the only difference will have been that company B has paid you a dividend. So this to me is a no brainer. A company that pays a dividend is money extra that you will get without the stock pricing price having to increase. So an equal investment in A, equal investment in B, for every $10 that you purchased in A will be worth $10 a year later. For every $10 that you purchase in company B will be worth $10.40. So for my money, that is a no-brainer. That extra $0.40 cents on every $10 that I spend, I'm going to invest in company B if all things are equal. So I always take the dividend. Now, the second topic is going to be about what to do with those dividends. So the, there's a couple of factors and you have to work with your financial planner to figure out what's best to do with it. Um, a lot of companies offer a dividend reinvestment purchase plan and this is something I actually found out way too late in life about. Um, I've been investing in dividend paying stocks since I was 16 and I didn't set up my first drip or the dividend reinvestment plan uh, until I was in my late 20s. So more than 10 years, I had dividends which I was getting in cash. And what would happen is I would, you know, I would purchase $1,000 worth of a stock and they would pay me $10 a month every month. And I would have to wait until that $10 got up to an amount large enough to purchase more stocks. But had I invested in their dividend reinvestment program, I would have automatically been purchasing a share at the current share value. And there would have been no cost to me in most cases. So if you had, for example, if you purchased 100 shares of a company that paid a dividend monthly that was equal to the cost of one share, then instead of getting that cash, you would get a share instead. So the first month, you have two options. You could either go without the drip and you would have 100 shares and at the end of the month receive $10 in cash. Or option B would be um, en enrolling in their drip program and having 100 shares and at the end of the month receiving one share. So the difference is that your money compounds faster with the drip program. 
And so at the end of the year, one company, you would have a company A or a scenario A, you would have 100 uh, shares still and you would have $120 cash, which you could do with what you want. You could pull it out if it was a non-registered fund or you could reinvest in a different company um, or in option in scenario B, you would have 112 shares and $7.80 cash. I, I feel that if you're investing for long-term growth and you're investing in companies that pay a regular dividend and that you value their company and you feel that you want to invest with it, then you should be willing to purchase those shares on a regular basis. So enrolling for the DRIP program means that you usually are cutting out the fees of your financial advisor and you are getting more income because each month at, at 112 shares, you are now getting the dividend on 112, whereas scenario A, you would only be getting the dividend on 100. That cash wouldn't be doing anything until it gets invested. So the drip program on a dividend is a fantastic way to create and build long-term wealth by reinvesting your dividends as soon as possible. So if there's a drip available, uh, sign up for it. There's usually no charge to you. So it's the absolute lowest fee way to do it. You know, buy your shares and then you don't even have to think about it. Every month you just get an additional share or two or three, depending on how big the dividend payout is. So that's my uh, tutorial today is just talking about the dividends and why I would always choose a dividend fund over a non-dividend paying fund, uh, whether it's a stock or a mutual fund, even though you guys all know I'm not uh, really keen on mutual funds for the most part, and uh, be uh, checking into a drip program and seeing if there is a dividend reinvestment plan because in the long run, they will make you the most amount of money and they do not, they save, your, they save you on fees and therefore you build your wealth faster. That's my tip of the week. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Bye.